guys, it's me, the crafty curator, Letitia. I know it has been a while and that's okay because life happens, but I'm here and I have stuff to share. I have finishes, I have whips, I have haul, um, minor life updates, you know how it goes. Um, I think the last video that I recorded was actually in September or October, so Happy New Year! It's March, but it's okay. Happy New Year. Um, I hope everybody is having a great year so far. Um, I'm having a good year. Pretty uneventful, um, except for the fact that um, I know I posted it on Facebook, but I recently had foot surgery. So I've been home um, since maybe mid-February, um, recuperating, convalescing, all that good stuff. Everything's fine. I'm healing well. Um, I have about a three and a half inch scar on my foot right now. It's still not even a scar. It's still a wound. It's still healing. Um, but I'm not in pain. I'm not in terrible pain. It's awkward. It's, you know, I can't really move my toe, but you know, whatever. I'm healing and all is well. Um, everything's going as it should go. Um, so other than that, that's been probably the highlight of my year so far. Nothing exciting has happened, um, but nothing bad has happened either, so it's all good. Um, so because I've been home, I've been getting a lot of stitching done. I've um, been watching a lot of floss tube. I don't know, Kara, if you watch my channel, Kay's Cross Stitch, but honey, you have been keeping me great company. Um, I have been binge watching your videos like a mad woman. I, it's something about your videos. She's always very upbeat, very bubbly, but it's something about the organization of her videos. It's almost like she does a talk show. So she has segments where, you know, she'll introduce her segment and she'll be like, it's time for, and I find myself saying stashquisitions or floss tube or floss tube flubies or sewing silliness. I find myself announcing what's coming up like with excitement, maybe a little more excitement than I should have, but I really enjoy her videos. Um, she has beautiful projects. You all know her as Kay's Cross Stitch, um, but I know we might know her in Stitch Mania as Kara, so thank you for keeping me company. It's been a great joy watching you, and when I'm done with this video and cleaning up the mess that I have surely made, um, I'll probably watch some more and I saw you uploaded a new one yesterday so I'm excited um so what's going on I have my notebook down here so um oh retreat 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 guys there is Julia from Julicious has taken the initiative to administer a floss tube retreat in Northern America and it's I can't even begin to tell you how excited I am. She has, this has been something that has been whispered about, talked about, nudged about, I think for the past year or two, but she took, you know, the horn by the, what's the phrase? Not the horn by the wheels, the horse by the horns. I, you know, I don't edit, so whatever. I don't know what it's called. Taking, what's that phrase? The wheel by the, horse by the wheel? I don't know. You know what I'm trying to say, so I'm going to move past it. Um, I'm still thinking about it, of course. Anyway, she took the initiative to set up this um, floss to retreat that's going to take place in October. And when I say I'm excited, I can't even put it into words. All the, not all the floss tubers, but a lot of floss tubers are going to be there. People we all know and love. Um, Emily's going... Megan is going, Jesse's going, Garrett's going, um, Stephanie from, um, oh my gosh, Miss Oso Crafty, just left my head. Stephanie's going, Candace is going, um, and a lot of people that we might know, you know, around Instagram or just in Stitch Mania, but the point of the matter is there is a ballroom that she has booked for the two and a half days that will be there. And I'm telling you, somebody needs to send the hotel a disclaimer and let them know that we're coming and we're serious about our, our stitching. Because you probably will walk into the ballroom at 4.22 in the morning and five people going at it because this is, this is what we do and nobody understands it but us. Um, so to have the opportunity to have so many people in one room that truly understand um, the obsession that we have with with stitching, it's gonna be epic, for lack of a better word. 
you know, I hate saying that, but it is. There's no other way to say it. It's going to be epic. So big shout out to Julia. Thank you so much for organizing this and, you know, for getting this together. Um, for us procrastinators that, you know, this was just a twinkle in our eye. You actually made it a reality. So good job. Um, so I have a new camera. I'm hoping it looks pretty clear. Um, Mr. Crafty Curator hooked me up with a great new camera for Christmas. Um, and he said, you know, I want you to continue making your videos because, you know, my videos are intermittent. And I'm hoping in the future to fix that. I think I'm going to venture into the land of vlogging um, because I know people like um, Emily C. I know Carolina just, or Carolina, um, just got into, it's a whole bunch of birds flying outside. Um, J Carolina just got into vlogging. Um, I love the way Emily does her vlogging. And even um, Kara, she doesn't necessarily vlog. But she is probably um, the person whose style I want to mimic where she takes um, excerpts of her opening her haul or whatever the case may be and she inserts them into her videos while Emily does a full-fledged vlog. And I love both styles. Um, but I like the idea of real-time um, recording, progress, updates, and just kind of meshing them together so it ensures that there's a more timely update for you guys because I love doing the updates but you guys know how it is you guys that you know do floss tube you know it takes some effort and some time and those of you that do it on a regular basis hats off to you because I'm a mess with it I, I love to do it um but yeah I'm I'm not as disciplined I guess so I'm gonna give that a go um but today I woke up at the crack of dawn I'm I'm still off work right now um but I had a bad dream of all things I had a bad dream and you ever have a dream where it seems so real that you wake up and you're pissed off about it and you know good and well it was a dream and you know good and well that what happened in the dream did not actually happen but you're still pissed off so I woke up with a little slight attitude and I was just up you know um, so I got up and um, I cleaned up the corner of chaos as I call it there's a stitchy chair here that up until a few minutes ago had all kinds of crap in it so um, I cleaned out the corner of chaos set up the the tripod and you know the fancy camera that mr. crafty curator gave me because he's cool like that Joe if you're watching looks good good job babe um, so yeah, um, I lost my train of thought just now. I don't know what I was talking about. Um, I know some of you are probably reminding me what I was talking about, but I went off on a tangent and I lost my way. I lost my way. Um, looking at the cat, Frankie, mischievous Frankie is in here and we may or may not have a mishap because, you know, a second ago he was sunbathing and happily sunbathing, laying in a sunbeam he's doing that right now but he's taunting me he's taunting me because I know and he knows that he solemnly swear he's up to no good and anything can happen at any given moment so let's hope for the best I have an unsteady pile of stuff over here the tripod is kinda you know MacGyvered um, so it's at the right height so um, anything can happen yeah we'll see so anyway, I'm going to show you what I've been up to. Um, I have a couple of whips, one of which I've been working on. I've become a monogamous stitcher. If you guys have been following me for all the time that I've been doing floss tube or um, posting in Stitch Mania, you know I'm one of those people. Uh, the crafty curator. I collect stuff. I, I, I get all the things. I, get, I collect all the things because... They're pretty and they're my style and I want them and I get them and yeah, that's that's my jam. Um, but lately, and also I've had a problem with starting stuff. You know, if something looks at me and is calling my name, I want to start it. I just, that's, you know, I have a bad case of startitis. Some people are very good at following through. They start something and they finish it. It's, it's a concept I haven't grasped, but, but some people do. Um, but as of late, and I, by as of late, I mean probably since Thanksgiving, I have become a monogamous stitcher. Thanksgiving, I went to my in-laws. 
house for the holidays. Um, there was a family event that took place um, actually the day before Thanksgiving, so it was an impromptu visit um, that took us there. But either way, when we went there, um, I took a project with me, as I always do. If I get in the car, there's a project with me. But anyway, um, I took one project, which was my blue Moroccan lace chatelaine. And I was working on it, working on it. Next thing you know, I was working on that thing, I mean, straight through for like a month. I don't know. Actually, I'm lying. I'm sitting here telling you a lie. I didn't take um, the Chatelaine with me. I took Rafiki with me. So anyway, fast forward or rewind before Thanksgiving. Before Thanksgiving, I was working on Blue Moroccan Lace. And that's all I was working on. Uh, because I was addicted to it and I was in love with it. Um, and I am going to do a Chatelaine update video. Um, going off on a tangent again, for those of you that don't know, I have a different thread called the Chatelaine Experience where I record my beginning of my, my progress rather with my Chatelaine from beginning to end um, and talk about the hiccups along the way, things that I've learned, things that have helped me because they're tricky projects. You guys know that just in a word, it's tricky. Um, so I just wanted to record my experience. So anyway, I haven't recorded any updates lately simply because I haven't been working on it, but what I have worked on, I will record it and upload it, um, probably after this video or sometime later today. But anyway, long story short, after I went, worked on the Chatelaine, I went to Rafiki and Rafiki is what I was working on from Thanksgiving, literally until I finished them. I think there were maybe two or three projects that I worked on maybe one day, I don't know, out of that two or three month period until I finished him, just to break the monotony. Um, but for all intents and purposes, I was solely stitching on Rafiki until I finished him. I said I wanted him to be my first finish of the year. I wanted to be done with him. Um, and wrap him up because he was at that point where he was so close but so far away and it was just it, annoying and with the rotation I was just kind of getting to him when I got to him and I wanted to see him finished um, so I did that I stuck to it and I finished him um, so he'll be making an appearance today and then I decided I'm going to finish another long time whip which was the Raven Queen um, the Raven Queen I started in September or October of 2015 <laughs> And at the time, I was also working on At The Met, which um, we all know I finished and fully finished. I showed her in my last video. So I was working on At The Met and Ed, I don't know if you guys know him from Stitch Mania, but we got on this Raven Queen kick where we were searching for fabric and it was an obsession. And when are we going to start this? And we're going to do this together. And next thing you know, I had the fabric. I found the perfect fabric. I love it. Um, and I started it. And, my, and I'm saying all this to say one of my th one of my rules used loosely, obviously, but one of my um, rules is that I don't like to have two mirrors going at the same time. Um, it's, I don't know, they're just big projects and I don't know, I just don't like to have two mirrors going at the same time. I don't, um, but I'll have two or three full coverage projects going at the same time. I'll have 45,000 whips going at the same time, but I won't have two mirrors. I don't know. In my head, it's logical and it makes sense and it's as it should be. Um, but anyway, I broke my rule and I started the Raven Queen and was simultaneously doing At The Met. And I finished At The Met in December, yeah, December of 2015. Um, but I started the Raven Queen in October, September, October of 2015. So anyway, she's been going on for that long. And I get annoyed with the Raven Queen because I was so excited to start her. I was so gung-ho. She was this new Mirabilia, the likes of which we had never seen before, and I was all over it, and then I didn't like her. Um, I didn't like working on her anymore, and I think it had something to do with stitching the skin one over one. I started stitching the skin one over one, which I, I, I love it. I really do. I hate to love it, because if any of you guys have done one over one, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It is so tedious, and it robs you of the joy of stitching 
but when you're finished with it oh my gosh it's so beautiful it's so beautiful and it's like when I finished her skin one over one I was like I'm probably going to do this again and I'm probably going to do this forever because I just love the finish um but anyway I'm rambling I decided I was going to stitch on the Raven Queen take advantage of this time that I have off um until I'm released to go back to work and finish her and just knock her out the box so I can start the ones I really want to do I've been acquiring and collecting Mirabilia's Mirabilia's which I I never said I, I said I would never do because I thought they were snooty and pretentious and I was like who wants to you know stitch these fancy looking ladies until I stitched one until I stitched one and I converted her skin tone to make her african-american and she's absolutely beautiful and I loved it so I decided I was going to stitch all the mirrors and make like you know this this rainbow coalition of mirabilias and have them of all different ethnicities and you know like the gypsy queen I want her to be Middle Eastern the willow queen I want her to be Native American I want you know the raven queen she's Asian so anyway now I have this whole lifelong plan for mirabilias and I love them and I'm in too deep and I'm I'm addicted and it's what it is but anyway so right now I'm solely stitching on the raven queen um, and I have no intentions of starting anything else or touching anything else until I'm done with her. Um, and then I'm going to reintroduce um, my rotation. So right now, the rotation that I have planned is going to include the one project that must not be named because I recently found out that my husband does watch my videos. And I can't talk about it or show it now because he's watching. Um, you guys know what I'm talking about. So I'll post updates on that, the one that begins with a D, um, in Stitch Mania. I'll post updates in Stitch Mania, but that's coming back into the rotation, but I won't show it on Instagram and I won't show it on um, my videos. Um, because I think he's really, really going to love it when it's done and it's going to mean a lot to him. Um, it has personal meaning to him. He just doesn't know that I'm doing it. Um, What was I talking about rotations so that one's coming back into the rotation I'm gonna bring back the blue moon the blue Moroccan lace I keep calling her blue moon the blue Moroccan lace Chatelaine um, my funky fish carnival by Hade and then something happened over the past couple of days in the heaven and earth designs um, group somebody showed this pattern of this retired it was a retired pattern that was no longer available and I have this thing about stitching fish, um, marine life, and I love it when it's true to form, when it's, when the images are, um, more real than cartoonish, for lack of a better way to describe it. Um, but anyway, this, somebody posted this update on the world of sea turtles, I think it's called, by Lewis T. Johnson. And it's a retired pattern. And when I saw this, it was like, skirt, time stopped. Because it was the most beautiful pattern. It was this large sea turtle. And in his shell was an image of this underwater fantasy world. I emailed Michelle. I put out an all points bulletin saying if anybody has this, wants to sell it, please contact me um and I'll show you a picture of it so you can appreciate my passion um this is it right here I'll get it as close as I can hopefully that'll focus but it's got all kinds of fish in it it's just it's so pretty and it has all the colors and oh, it's just so pretty long story short coral and all kinds of fish and other little turtles and oddly enough there's a little girl in here why I don't know but I just found her she's there's a little girl in there I think it's a little girl I don't know my eyes are failing but anyway long story short I emailed excuse me Michelle and no sooner than I get the message saying sorry 
we can't give you any retired patterns, somebody came through. So I have a wonderful benefactor that is going to um, send me the pattern and I'm telling you, this may throw my rotation out the door because all I want to do is start it or um, I might just add it to the rotation, but either way, it's happening. So that's good news. Um, what else is going on? Was there something else I wanted to say before I start showing you the stuff? Um, I think that's it. I think that's all I wanted to say. So once, um, the Raven Queen is done, like I said, I'll bring the rotation back into effect. I think I want to continue working on them longer than a week, um, like I was doing in the past. Who were we kidding? I wasn't even doing that in the past. I really wasn't sticking to a rotation. I called myself sticking to a rotation, but I kept starting stuff. Um, oh, and I have a bead pack. I'm going to show that. I have a bead kit that I want to start, so I might throw that into the mix, too. I might start that sooner than, sooner than later, because that might be a fairly quick finish, because it's all beads, and it's small. It's smaller than the average bear, so it's not small. It's not small. It's long. She's tall. Um, but I would finish it quicker than I would finish a cross stitch pattern, I would imagine. I don't know. In my mind, I would. But anyway, so that might be coming into the mix. But I'll talk more about that once I get to that point. But right now, it's all about the Raven Queen. Um, for those of you that don't know, I refer to her as Kim Chi. Um, Kim Chi, one of my favorite shows, I share this love with um, our beloved Mackenzie is RuPaul's Drag Race. I mean, I love this show so much that last year I was, you know, interested in going to the convention that they have in Los Angeles. Um, they had it last May. I didn't go, but I wanted to. But anyway, I love RuPaul's Drag Race. And there was um, one queen who went by the name of Kim Chi. Um, she was an Asian queen and she was absolutely phenomenal. I think in one of my past videos I showed a, a picture of her and when I see the Raven Queen I see Kim Chi. Um, so I tried to um, do a little bit with her eyes um, to give her more of an Asian feel and I darkened her hair a little bit but I refer to him as her as Kim Chi just as I referred to at the Met as Josephine um, or Dorothy Josephine because you know the muse for for that conversion was Dorothy Dandridge and Josephine Baker. Funny story, when the Oscars was on a couple of weeks ago, Janelle Monet came out in this beautiful embroidered gown. She has this beautiful sheer um, bodice with a lot of embellishments on it and this full ridiculously large and, and extravagant skirt. And she also had like this little um, pixie cut with a headband so Katie the stash queen sent me a message in stitch mania she was like I saw you I saw Janelle Monet and I instantly thought of at the Met and it was so true because I was like as soon as she said that and, and posted the picture I totally saw it so maybe Josephine has a third name maybe she's Josephine Dorothy Janelle why not but anyway so that's my inspiration for the Raven Queen um, also known as kimchi. So if you hear me referring to her as kimchi, that's why. Um, so without further ado, let's get into some stuff. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the Raven Queen. Show you where I am with her right now. Um, there she is. Oh, I'm not used to this. Here we go. Hopefully you guys can see this. I can see it. So hopefully it's Obviously, I can see it, but hopefully you guys can see it and the sunlight isn't too bright. But this is the Raven Queen. Um, her skin is stitched one over one. And I'm just starting to do... Um, I'm going to fold it in half so you're not just seeing straight through it. But I'm just starting to do the inside of her dress with the Karen Water Lilies. That's done, so there won't be any more of that particular color there. That's Car all Karen Water Lilies right there, the blue-green variation. Finished all the stone. I have a little bit left to do. <sighs> K-1 
can't get this into the screen. I have a little bit left to do on the border. Not much, but a little bit left to do. Um, but here's her face. One over one. And like I said, I darkened her hair and tried to accentuate her eyelashes a little bit more to give that um, Asian feel. I had finished all the chronic on her crown and her collar and I have the whisper um, black fuzzy thread on the black portion of her collar to give that three-dimensional look to it. So, but that's the Raven Queen in all her glory been working on her steadily like I've said um, maybe uh, since when did I finish Rafiki guys I don't know I don't know when I finished Rafiki it was February I was home I was off work so it was mid to late February that I finished Rafiki I don't remember the date um, but that's when, as soon as I finished him, I started her. Well, that started, but I picked her back up. And I'm going to work on her, um, until she's finished. I did order the mini stretcher, bar stretcher bars that Danielle Stitcherista talked about in her video. Um, I'm not sure I'm 100%, um, sure that I'll like the tension I like tight tension so I don't know what type of tension they'll provide it looked pretty tight um in her video but I have to see for myself but the reason that I ordered them is because I have a phobia about not a phobia but I don't I don't like the idea of rolling um beaded portions of my work up in the scroll frame I'm a little bit uneasy about that um and people have said, you know, you lay some felt or some felt or some quilt batting down and just roll it up where the tension is still good, but it's not super tight. I think I just have to try it for myself, but it makes me nervous for some reason. I think that it's going to mess up the beads or the beads are going to poke through the fabric. I don't know. I haven't even tried it. So, you know, that's just my my idea that it might be a little bit difficult. But anyway, I've ordered these stretch bars with the idea that um, I can stretch out the piece and have the whole, um, all of her available for on one canvas for me to bead all at one time. So I'm going to give that a go. They were like two bucks. So no harm, no foul if it doesn't work out, right? But anyway, that's the Raven Queen. That's my girl right now. Um, but here, <sighs> love, my love, my love is Rafiki. Yeah, we're that he's all done. Two over one on eighteen count. Right here, we had the puppy dog duct duct tape that was on there because um I'm just gonna hold it up and talk behind him. We had the puppy dog duct tape that was on him because somehow I don't remember what I did. I think I was putting it in a scroll. I was doing something and I poked a hole in it and. In my infinite wisdom, I just stuck some duct tape on it. Um, so I washed him. I thought somebody was calling me. So I washed him and I took off the duct tape, and it's still gummy, of course, but it's going to be in a frame, so nobody's going to see that, but that's fine. Um, but one of the things I wanted to show you, because I know a lot of people wonder about this and talk about this and ask questions about it. I gritted each page as I went on Rafiki. I gritted um, using a clover water sol soluble marker and people are really concerned that it doesn't come out. It absolutely does. And I made dark lines. You know, I wasn't I wasn't light handed with the um, with the marker. There is absolutely no indication that there was any grid marks on here. None whatsoever. Um, Hopefully this is in focus so you can see him. But there is absolutely no indication of any 
grid line on here. Now, when I say I washed it, um, I let it soak in cold water with some hand detergent, um, dishwashing detergent. I filled the tub of the sink up with um, cool water, a little bit, not necessarily lukewarm, but it had a little heat to it. It wasn't fr frigid, it wasn't freezing cold. Um, and I just kind of let him sit in the bath for a little while and you know I agitated just a little bit like literally just shook it around agitated I didn't scrub anything um, I just kind of swayed it around in the water and I just let him sit and hang out and chill for um, I don't know maybe an hour this is all DMC no hand dyed fabric or threads it's on simple Ada um, and when I pulled him out I hung him up and let him air dry and then gave him a little iron and this is this is one happy monkey and I've been showing this to you with this thread over top I did put my little um, signature on there little LB with a 17 um, for those of you that don't know the story behind Rafiki um, my husband and I were on vacation in Punta Cana and for some reason we were talking about cross stitch cross stitch comes up everywhere we go um, but we were talking about cross stitch and he said something along the lines of, you know what would be really cool what I would like you to stitch for me. And he mentioned this particular picture of Rafiki. So um, I look, pulled up the picture, I pulled up the image. He said specifically the picture of Rafiki meditating. He loves that particular image of it. Um, I got him a, I had a t-shirt made for him for birthday anniversary something. I had a t-shirt made for him with the same image. Not this image, but it was um, an image of Rafiki um, meditating. I had the image. I had the image put on the T-shirt. So anyway, long. Um, I'm rambling again. He said he wanted me to stitch this particular picture, and obviously there is no picture on the market, nothing out there with this pattern. So I created the pattern myself um, on Pick to Pat, and. If anybody's wondering, this is how they come out. Um, pretty true to form. Pretty true to form. So he wanted this picture, so we'll get it framed, and he's going to put it up in his office. Um, but this is my first full coverage piece. This is actually, as far as stitch count goes, the biggest piece I've ever done. It's, I think it's about 48,000 stitches. Um, but this is my first full coverage um, and by far the, the largest part, the largest piece that I've ever done based on stitch count alone. So Rafiki will be going to the framer soon. Um, once I'm mobile, we'll get out there and get him framed up and give him a permanent home. So that's what's going on with that. Um, the last one that I want to show you is the blue Moroccan lace, simply because it has been some progress on it even though I haven't worked on it since last year there's been progress on it since, since my last video um, and I'll go into detail more detail with it in a um, shuttling experience video but I've certainly posted pictures on Instagram and stitch mania while I was working on it um, but just so you can see for yourself this is where we are with this one right now there's the update still in that first um or second should I say that second um border I don't know region this outlined area here the area outlined in blue I haven't gone outside of that yet so right now I'm just filling it in um but I will do a shadow lane experience video for you guys and get all up in there get all close and personal with it um and this is something where I'm doing the krennic and the specialty stitches and the cross stitches, obviously, but I'm not doing any beading yet. Um, I tried to bead that first, the center part, um, with the Tyla beads, and I ended up taking it out um, because it just made me nervous and I didn't know how they, I didn't like how they were laying. Um, and I'm not one that beads as I go. There's a little bit of beading in there. Um, from where I started the Delica beads are in there I left them because they were fine but I took out the Tyla beads um, because I just didn't like how they were laying and I didn't want to rush the process um, so I just went back to plan A where I bead after all the stitching is done um, but like I said I will 
do a Chatelaine experience update and let you know where we are with that. I did have one other finish. Um, I think I finished this in October or November um, of last year. And I posted updates and I framed it myself. Um, but I still never showed it to you guys. So this is the three Yoruban women. Sorry for the glare. Three Yoruban women. Um, this is there you go. A kit by Dimensions that I stitched up on 18 count black Ada. Somehow along the way I had to redo all of the threads. I had to replace all of the threads with DMC. I think I've had this kit for like 15 years. A long time. A long time I've had this kit. Um, and I started it and I kind of put it away and it's one of those things that just became an unfinished object. And then I lost it. Um, we moved and I found the threads that I had already replaced once, but I couldn't find the actual project. Um, so I found the threads and the floss, but the pro project was somewhere else. And then when I found them, when I actually found the piece, it was in the garage, I think. I think, I don't know where it was, but I found it. Um, I just jumped in and finished it up. Um, so this is the final piece. And I framed it myself. Framed from my Michaels or Hobby Lobby something. If you saw the back, you could absolutely tell it was homemade. Um, but the front looks great, but the back, yeah. Framing by Letitia. Um, I won't go into that business. I won't go into the framing business anytime soon. I'll just leave it at that. But the front of it looks great, and I'm proud of it, and I'm extremely happy with it. So that's finished. Um, but that's all as far, all I have to show as far as um, whips and hauls and finishes and all that. Um, no, not hauls, because I'm about to go into that. So that's it for the whips and the finishes. That's what I'm trying to say. So now I'm going to go into a little bit of haul. Um, some of these things you guys have seen before um, because they're fairly popular, but so I'll go through them. But I got a couple of kits that are really interesting that I want to go into um, a little bit of detail with. I think we're at 37 minutes right now, so um, this might take a little more time. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to do a separate video just for the kits alone unless somebody really wants me to get um, down and dirty with it. And... Um, I can certainly do that, not a problem, but, um, you know, we like our long videos. Get your stitching, sit back, relax, have a cup of coffee or tea, and enjoy. So the first one, I've been on this Rosewood Manor kick, apparently. The first one I have is called Arise My Soul, and it reads, Darkness depart and let the sun shed forth his light and power. Arise, my soul, thy course to run, and slumber now no more. I don't know. I just liked it. So that's Arise, my soul, by Rosewood Manor. And I ordered the weeks that came with it. Um, and I think it's all weeks, Dye Works. It is. It's only, what, one, two, three, four, five, it's only six colors. So, I just dropped it. Um, trying to see if it came with the DMC conversion. It didn't. Didn't have a DMC conversion, but these are the weeks that it came with. Um, River Rock. You know, you would think by now, I would know. To have some type of something to put behind. There we go. We have River Rock. 
nice purpley dusty lavender. We have Indian Summer. I can't see how these are coming up. It's really bright outside. So it's not a glare, but it's it's a glare. We have Bark. Nice. These are all nicely variegated too. So I can see why there's no DMC um, conversion available. Moss. Amber. And teal frost. A really good description of that. So it comes with six, it doesn't come with, but it, six colors that are um, in that pattern. So it's not a lot. You know, Weeks Dye Works is um, pretty affordable. So I just got those. That's all ready to go. That's a rise my soul. Prairie Schooler. I've never owned Prairie Schooler. Fun story. Um, I don't know if she would want me to mention her, so I'm not going to mention her name, but she knows who you are. There was a stitcher that was going to be generous enough to share her Prairie Schooler um, ABC patterns with me because I wanted them and I didn't jump on the bandwagon um, while they were available, unfortunately. Um, and by the time that I did get you know, the notion to go out and buy them, they were absolutely ridiculously priced. So a wonderful fellow stitcher said, hey, I'm not going to be stitching these anytime soon. So I will send you mine um, to stitch and then you can just send them back to me. So she was going to share them with me, which I thought was absolutely w wonderful and generous of her. And she did. She sent me the first half um, and I never quite got to it. I started it, but I didn't, but I didn't get to it. And then I think I had them for maybe a month. Um, Prairie Schooler did a reprint and they were selling them on one, two, three stitch for basically the same price that they were originally um, marketed as they weren't they weren't marked up and if they were it was like by cents it wasn't ridiculous it was pretty much the same price um so I was able to acquire the entire Prairie Schooler collection for the ABC so I'm really excited about that but this here's how phenomenal this this young lady is um I had every single pattern except for VWX yeah yeah, VWX. So I was missing one pamphlet. And I let her know and she was like, no problem, you know, I'll send you mine when you need it, you know, and just awesome woman. And then she found it on Stash Unload. She found it on Stash Unload, the pamphlet for $5. Do you know she snatched it up for me? And she said, I have it, you know, I, I snatched it up for you if you want it. Um, and she didn't want the money. She didn't want the money. She just sent it to me. And I'm telling you guys, between the sea turtle and the prairie schooler, you guys are an amazing group of people. And you understand that desire when you see something that you really want. We just, you know, we look out for each other, you know. And I just love that she was not only willing to share it with me, um, but when I found my own set, you know, still on the lookout for that last piece that I needed to complete it and now I have the full set so thank you you know who you are same lady same wonderful lady she received somehow she ordered um, the monopoly the elusive monopoly pattern and you guys saw what um, um, my god Pam Reed my name just fell out my head what Pam Reed did she made that beautiful Monopoly pattern. Um, again, it's out of print. This young lady had two copies of the Monopoly pattern, and she reached out to me. She said, I have two copies. Do you want one? So I have the Monopoly pattern now. Um, really excited about that. Don't know when I'll stitch it, but I have it, and it makes me happy. But, I mean, I just I love that she thought of me, and, you know, I hope I, I can pay that forward. Um, to other stitchers but you know it just speaks volumes about how we look out for each other and um, how we appreciate one another and um, I've looked out for her a couple of times too so it's it's really it's really good to have that 
um, relationship where you're able to share patterns and, you know, gift patterns and, you know, just see something and be like, hey, I think you would love this. Do you want it? You know, and I just love it. So anyway, um, that was a nice rack. Um, again, with Rosewood Manor, Autumn Quakers. I also got the set of Valdan Valdani threads that come with this. I don't, if they're in another project bag across the room. Um, so I'm not going to show them in this video, but I'll show them. Maybe I'll show them in my Chatelaine Experience video. But I got the um, recommended threads that come with this, the Valdani 12-pack. Um, and I was shocked because when I got the, the pack of threads, I was shocked at how teeny tiny they were. Um, and I think they were three-ply. They were three ply, I believe, and I didn't know what to do. I was like, okay, do I stitch these like I do any other variegated thread? Like pull out a length and stitch one X at a time. And it says so right in the pattern. My mother used to always say, read and you can conquer the world. It says right in the pattern that you stitch with all three strands of the floss at one time. So, of course, I put out this all points of religion and stitch mania. How do I stitch this pattern? And it says it right there. Um, but it shocked me how teeny the little, how tiny the little balls were. Um, the little the little balls of floss they were they were really small but people say they're wound very tightly and there's a lot in there and you'll have stuff left over but this is autumn Quakers definitely my style busy colorful all that good stuff and then another rosewood banner you guys have seen this from Brian at Blitz Stitch oh no about to have an av avalanche. Brian at Blitz Stitch, Lindy Stitches, um, D Stitcher, everybody's stitching this, and I've loved this pattern in a forest groom. Funny story when I go, in, where are we? We're at 45 minutes. When I go into my LNS, um, the stitching post in Catonsville, Maryland, I'm telling you, every single time I go in there, I look at this. Every single time I go in there. And I never knew what it was called. I never knew what it was called, but I look at it and I'm like, oh my God, that's so pretty. But I never looked up the pattern. I never, I didn't, I didn't acquire it um, until I saw Brian Blitzstitch. If you guys aren't watching his videos, watch Blitzstitch. I love watching his videos. Um, he has such beautiful stitching, but I love how he introduces um, his work, how he um, how he chronicles his work. He uses graphs to you know look at how many days per month he stitched, what he stitched on, how long he spent stitching on this project. It's I just like how he organizes himself, and he has beautiful patterns. He's one of those like I know Pam is like this. I know I'm like this. He likes big patterns. And you know, go large or go home. Go home. And he has all of these beautiful, elaborate um, projects that I just I love seeing updates on. So anyway, he's doing in a forest grew. And when I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, that's the pattern. That's the one I keep looking at. And then I went and got it. Um, so I don't know when I'll start it, but it's a book. And I'm not exaggerating. It's it's a book. So that should be great fun. That's it for the patterns um, that I've acquired. Got some kits, guys. Got some kits. Um, don't want to go into the kits or the needle miners. Um, let's go into the needle miners because it, it'll be quick. Then a little funny thing happened with my needle miners. So I got some needle miners from Abby and Delicious Threads. Um, Abby Bella Stitch, we know, um, took a step back. I hope all is well with her family, um, but she's doing a lot of um, sales on eBay. She's selling off her needle minders like for basically a dollar a piece, um, but they're sold in bulk. Um, so I recently acquired a, a place in order to get some of those needle minders. We know she has beautiful needle minders, so um, I took advantage of that opportunity and to show her a little bit of support. Abby, if you're watching, I hope all is well with you and your family, and we miss your presence. Um, but because of that recent purchase, because there's quite a bit of needle minders that are, are coming in that, in that lot shipment, I did order one of those big magnetic boards, um, because I accidentally created a large collection of needle minders and they're, 
located in different spots and I want to be able to have them all in one location so I got a large magnetic needle board that I'll probably just put up here I'm able to wall mount it um, and that should be coming I think Friday so anyway so this was my last order from Abby not the most recent one um, the lot shipment from eBay but I did order a couple from her um, where we have the little slice and a pair of scissors if you guys haven't ordered any of these slices I call them slices there's an actual name for them that escapes me right now these are the best needle minders I'm they're just so good they're flat they're just like um slices it looks like a slice of a rock but it's polished and it's smooth like glass and it, they are just the best needle minders I love them I have two of two of them now and there is a pair of scissors. I'll probably have a few more with this order that's coming. Last order I placed was with Delicious Threads. Now, I'm about to show you what this looks like. This was not what it looked like when I ordered it. I have a little pug named Bella, and we had um, some heavy storms come through here last week. And she was downstairs sleeping, and I think the wind's coming through, the wind's um, flaring up in the rain she got scared but the winds our windows were open and the winds were so powerful that they knocked over a vase that we have on one of our end tables and on that same end table was the card with my needle miners on it and she got a hold of it and she chewed it up and my little voodoo doll here he is now an amputee he has no leg so Bella did that, and I'm very upset about that because I love that needle binder, little stinker. And then I have a sparkly poop emoji because everybody needs a sparkly poop emoji needle binder. Um, Wonder Woman minion and the letter L. Look what he did to my needle binder, what she did. Little stinker. And I really love this voodoo doll because it looks like it has a pair of knitting needles stabbed through his heart. Which, you know, it's kind of dark now that I say it out loud. And she took the nose off too. What a jerk. I don't know. I might do some doctoring maybe with some nail polish. Get creative so it doesn't look as tragic. But anyway, those are my noodle minders. Um, when I get the lot in from Abby, I'll show you what I got with those. So what's up next? Somebody posted on Facebook, uh, maybe in the last couple of weeks, it was a kit that they were looking for with a mama giraffe and a baby giraffe from Lanart. It was a beautiful kit. Like, she posted that and she said she was desperately looking for it. And somebody posted that they found it on eBay. So... I went on eBay and there were two kits there. So I messaged her and I asked her, did you get it? And she said, I did. Um, and she got the, the least of the, I think there were like maybe a, a cost difference of $3 between the two options available and she got the least expensive option. So I went back and I got the other one. But this is called Love and Devotion from the Land Art Animals Collection. Isn't that sweet? Two giraffes, mama and baby. So sweet. I like it a lot. So that's from Lanart. They have an animals collection. They have um, elephants. They have an elephant, mama and baby. They have tiger, mama and baby. I want to say a panda bear, but I might be making that up. It's tiger elephant, giraffe, not lion, maybe it is a lion, I don't know, maybe it's not a panda bear, save these for last, um, this is a find I found off of eBay from designer Keith Mallet. I haven't seen his work in years. This is an old pattern. Um, this is actually 17 years old. Um, it came out in 2000. And it's a, bu a Busia counted cross stitch kit. 
and it's called Autumn. Um, I found this online. It's out of print. I found it on eBay, rather. Well, it's online. But on eBay, it's out of print. And it has an African-American angel holding a little baby. And the baby is wrapped up in the headdress of the angel. And it's so sweet. He does beautiful work, Keith Mallet. He does um, several patterns for Maya, M-A-I-A. -A. Um, I have several of their kits. Um, but some of the, if some of you might be familiar with the jazz prints that he might have done, I have, I have several of their kits that um, he was the designer um, for the artwork for those kits. So I was very excited to acquire this. And it was at a really reasonable um, cost. I mean, some of these... This pattern in particular, it goes online. If you go online and Google it, you might find people are selling it for like $200. It's ridiculous. I got it for $20. So I was excited to find that and I snatched it up. Um, so a couple of things down here. I need to have a section of my videos that's called the Peacock Parade. Because I love peacocks. I love them. They're so pretty. And if I see a peacock pattern, I snatch it up. I snatch it up. You know, I'll probably be stitching it in, you know, the retirement home that I'm in when I'm 90. Because um, I have so many. I have so many, and it's ridiculous. But now I have more. Um, but before I go into those, this is um, a kit. I can't pronounce the name. It's a Russian kit that I acquired off of eBay. I just thought that was so cool. There you go. So cool. That's the whole pattern right there. This is... I can't pronounce it. But that's who it is. So, something K, um, Kara from Case Creation talked about... Case Creations, I'm sorry, Case Cross Stitch on her um, channel. She talks about how she watches a lot of the Russian cross stitch channels, even though she can't understand what they're saying. Um, there's a lot of different types of kits that you might be exposed to by watching them, and I do too. I love watching them. Um, they do a lot of stitching on screen, which I love to watch. Um, I like to stitch along to those types of videos where somebody is stitching it's very relaxing to me but they even though they're talking throughout the video I kind of just tune it out and look at what they're doing or what they're working on because they have kits that we may not um, have seen here in the US so a lot of times that's where I get these um, ideas from for these um, different types of kits or um, looking for these kits that you may not normally see. Um, keep looking outside because, you know, there's a world going on out there and I'm interested in what's happening. So this begins the Peacock Parade. I got these kits off of Hirschner's. And these are from Brodery, I'm going to say. It might be incorrect. Um, but it looks like it is a Russian designer. Um based off of the language, but it's all anchor floss um, and Zweigart. But the kit is called Brodery and this is called Two Peacocks. This picture close. And this is how the floss is laid out. It's all anchor. This was also from Hirschner's, same company, Brodery, and this is just called Peacocks, and it's two peacocks. This is open, so I don't want all my stuff sliding out. Um, this is two peacocks. One of them is colorful, one of them is not, so you have a male and a female. And there's the floss in the back. And then found myself on AliExpress again, guys. I did. I went to AliExpress and I got the mother of all peacock patterns. Um, 
Not only do I not know when I'll stitch this, I have no idea how long it'll take me to stitch this. I don't even know where I would put it um, because it's four feet long and it's about two feet wide. Yeah, it's about two feet wide by four feet. It's pretty big. Sorry for all the crinkling, but I have to open it up so you can see. Crinkle, crinkle, sorry, sorry. So it comes packaged. These AliExpress kits, they are very deceptive because it comes in this little package. Oh, there's the design. How about I show you that? I'll take it out. You might see it a little better. It comes in this little package. You're like, okay, whatever. It's not very big. And then you open it up. Holy moly. Holy moly. So that's the pattern. It's um, a booklet. It's um, 21 pages. And it's on that standard 11 count canvas that the Chinese kits um, provide. And then it gives you the number key in the kit. But it also provides a number key on on the actual canvas that corresponds to the color that you want to use and it offers you DMC conversions um, which I may end up using and I'll tell you why I may end up converting the floss there are two options for this kit and this whole kit was like 22 bucks very inexpensive but they gave you an option to either use cotton or silk so the cotton option was like $20 and the silk option was 22 of course I chose the silk problem is when I got the silk it wasn't like the spun silk that we're used to using um, which I guess is equivalent to like dinky dyes or water water lilies that spun silk this was the filament silk so it's very flim it's a bad word for it it's very I want to say silky but that doesn't make sense how about I show it to you um, I don't know. I have to see how it is stitching with this. So this is the silk. I don't know if it's real silk. I don't know if it's rayon. I don't know what it is. But this is what it comes with. It's a lot. And it's all on a floss card that's numbered for you. But this is the silk. Here is another floss card of the silk. And then you have your backup. So, I don't know how I can't I don't know how I'm going to do this. So, with this number 1, I'm going to assume I will definitely need like a vat of thread heaven. Um, like all the thread happened in the universe. I don't know. I'm going to give it a try because I love the sheen. I love how shiny it is. I just don't know if I'll enjoy working with it. But this is the pattern. So before I open it up, the pattern, it comes numbered. I did a video on these types of patterns before that really got up close and personal with how the Chinese patterns are formatted. Um, so if you are interested, maybe go back to, I want to say my eighth video, give or take, but you'll see it because the thumbnail uh, picture, it looks like this. It's like, it's the pattern. It looks like it's the, the canvas. So it looks like this. But anyway, it goes really into detail about these um, charts and how they are organized on the fabric. So it's all color coded when you're done. You wash it and all of this color comes out. You might have to let it soak in your tub, uh, but all of this color washes out. But this is the pattern. I can't stand up, so hopefully my arm length will help. This is the bottom. And that's the top. Talk amongst yourselves. Yeah. Okay. 
It was a peacock, guys. It was it was $22. It was a peacock. So I got it. Yeah. I don't know. I'm excited about it, but where that where where am I gonna put this? I don't know. You know, my husband, he never judges me. He never ever judges my purchases. He loves that I have this hobby and that I'm so passionate about it. And he thinks everybody should have some sort of hobby that they enjoy that much. Because this hobby, it really brings me joy. It really brings me joy. It calms me. It keeps me centered. It keeps me focused. Um, I have a very reactive personality. So if something is bothering me or something pisses me off, I react. And this kind of keeps me, keeps that at bay. You know, if I'm upset about something or if, um, whether it's being angry about something or being sad about something, this is where I sit down and I can channel that energy um, and use my powers for good and not evil. And I'm able to sit down with the stitching and it's it's like meditation to me. Just like, you know, people sit and they center and they meditate. This is that for me. So this is all to say he never judges it. He encourages it. He loves the fact that I record it and I share it with the world and that I'm passionate about it. Um, but if he's watching this video and he just showed, saw that like big ass pattern of a peacock that I just showed, he might judge me on that one. And I wouldn't blame him because it's ridiculous and it's obnoxious and it's huge. Where am I going to put it? I don't know. We're not, not even where am I going to put it, but when am I going to finish that? That's like something where everybody in the household needs to take a corner and work on it. And when I say everybody in the household, I mean my husband, stepdaughter, my cats and the dog. Everybody needs a needle and thread in their hand to, to tackle that thing because that's a beast. But I'm so excited about it and I'm not apologizing for it because it's fabulous. But it's, it's obnoxious and I know it. So anyway, moving on. Mirabilias. I acquired two more Mirabilias, one of which is going to be the start after the Raven Queen, I've decided. Um, I know a couple of people asked me what mirror I'm going to work on next, so I'm going to show you. Are we still, oh my gosh, we're at an hour and seven minutes, guys. It's like a movie. All right. So I've been admiring this from afar for quite some time. This is the Shimmering Mermaid. Love her. Love her skirt. I've seen pictures of this stitched up on Instagram and it's these pictures, you guys already know, these pictures don't do it justice. It's amazing. But she has almost this patchwork mermaid, I said skirt, she's a mermaid, it's a fin. Um, but her fin is almost like a patchwork quilt, almost. You guys know this one, right? Oh God, I love it. So I have her with all the fixins. So that's gonna happen. <sighs> then I have the one that's going to be up next on the docket. And this is probably the first Mirabilia that I've ever purchased that was inspired by fabric. So I joined this Fabric of the Month Club with this um, company that I, I think I've heard of before, but I never um, utilized them before. It's called Youthful Hands. So Youthful Hands, does she have a card on here? Is the um, Fabric of the Month Club organizer, I don't know. But she uses Sunny Dyes fabric. Can you see? There you go. I'm not used to the camera, I'm used to my phone, so forgive me for being all over the place. But this is Snow Moon on 28 Count Lugana. Here's the deal with this one. It has a moon on it, guys. It's a hand-painted fabric with the moon. How cool is that? So I was like, this needs a Mirabilia. And at first I was thinking, oh my God, Stargazer, and I'll kind of have her like right here so she's looking up in the moon with her body going down into the fabric. And then I was like, no, 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 not Stargazer. Lily of the Woods. And I love Lily of the Woods because she's a horizontal pattern rather than vertical. And most Mirabilias are vertical, but she is horizontal. So I'm picturing her sitting on her tree branch going into the moon. 
So here's the pattern that's stuck to a plastic bag. Here's the pattern. So you see how she's sitting? Who's working on this one? Mackenzie? She's working on this one. So you see how she's sitting and she's laying, you know, blissfully on this tree branch with these little lilies, which actually look like cherry blossoms to me, but you know, whatever. So she's this little fairy. I've never stitched a fairy before. And she's sleeping on a branch with this beautiful, beautiful drape and this beautiful mustard colored gown and this embellished pillow. So you see her? Can't you see her sleeping on that under the moonlight? You with me, guys? I can see that. Not only can I see it, I'm going to stitch it. So that's what's going to happen with this. So this is Sun Moon. If you guys want to get it, I ordered it from Youthful Hands. This was the fabric of the month for January or February. I don't remember. I only, I only received one so far. Um, but I just paid the invoice for the second one, so I'm assuming this was February. 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 February? Am I saying that right? I can say it. <clears throat> just choose not to. So, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the Mirabilia Lily of the Woods on this pretty fabric. She's going to be sleeping on a branch underneath the moonlight. So the last two things I have to show you, I alluded to earlier, um, again, Russian kits. They came from the Ukraine, um, but it is a beading kit um, referred to as bead point. I see a lot of the um, floss tubers. Um, I don't know if they're floss tubers. I call them floss tubers, but I don't even know if they, re if they realize they're doing floss tube videos. Um, but they record them doing bead point, um, which is basically stitching with nothing but beads. It's nothing but beads, and it's fascinating to watch these videos. Um, if I think about it and I remember to do it, I'll put a link to a couple of them um, that I've watched recently below. But they watching those videos inspired me to go poking around Etsy to see if I could find a bead point kit where it's nothing but beads. I had one that I ordered from the Ukraine, I think, last year. And I was disappointed because it was very small and the beads were minimal um, and it wasn't what I thought it would be. So I kind of steered away from that. But this watching the videos kind of brought me back into being interested. There's one more thing I have to show you. Kind of brought me back into being interested in looking for bead point. So I went looking. I went looking. I went looking. I went poking around. And oh my gosh, to what do my wondering eyes did appear. But these two... African American women. There's one. The beads and the head wrap, the necklace, the jewelry, 100% in beads, guys. That's the first one. This is the second one. I love the first one. This is my favorite. But I'm going to do them both and have them framed and just kind of have them side by side because they're awesome like that so it's a pretty long kit I'll show you what it came with they all come this one is not opened this one it's not opened the other one is but the beads come like that and they're all numbered according to the color um, and there isn't an actual pattern the other one I opened so this one I'm going to show you this is this one. It doesn't have a name. It's just this beading kit. Oh, I'm not sorry. So this one. This is how big it is. How awesome is that? So you see the pattern is on the side or the color key for the beads rather is on the side this is not something that you would wash it's not even the fabric it's not an even weave oh it's an even weave but it's not it's more like a fabric as opposed to a canvas <clears throat> like Lugana or um, Joblin it's it's like a cotton fabric but it almost looks like a silk screen print 
of the woman, but the uh, it's it's beautiful. The image is absolutely beautiful. Like that's her up close. So I'm totally fine without stitching her um, because it's so beautifully printed on the fabric. So it would just have to be a mat that is flush against this edge to cover up the collar key. Um, but everything here is beaded. I don't know how many beads there are, but there are a lot. Um, and I'm excited about it. I'm really excited about this. So this may make an introduction um, when I'm done with the Raven Queen, but I'm not sure if it's going to be a rotation. It might just be something that I do because I'm interested in seeing how long it takes to complete one of these because it's a lot, but it's not stitching. It's beading and beading goes a little bit quicker than stitching. We all know. So in my mind, it won't take that long, right? Remember I said that um, in my mind, it won't take that long couple more things and I'm out of here so I think in my last video I showed maybe I took pictures I don't know if I showed it um I've received a couple of I didn't receive I ordered a couple of some bags project bags from so much to love um I have the one with the stitching theme and I have one that's red black and white with kitty cats all over it well, since then, I have ordered two more. This is Brown Kaleidoscope. Really nice. Polka dots. Love polka dots. And I love the Brown Kaleidoscope colors. And inside, it's yellow polka dots. One of these, both of these. Mm, I don't know. One of these was on clearance. And I think it was the, owl, the owls, the one I'm about to show you. I ordered two of these. The second, two of these, rather. The second one it's on its way but this is for some but this is mine mine but i ordered another one that was on clearance um for someone else so the one that's for someone else is on its way but look at these fun owls i have a thing for owls too birds and marine life guys not just birds peacocks what am i talking about peacocks no peacocks and owls Peacocks, owls, and marine life. And all the other things in the world. Um, and inside it has a nice orange X kind of fabric. I love these project bags. They are so well made and so durable. And they just hold so much stuff. Excuse me, like I stitch on an 11 by 11 Q-snap that doesn't quite fit in here does it let's pull out this handy 11 by 11 q-snap that i have right here in the corner of chaos no it doesn't fits by width not by height so this will hold an 8 by 8 q-snap but i don't tend to put my project you can always fold up your project and put it in here if you're not keeping in the q-snap i don't know but it's a nice option to hold like your floss or your notions, your scissors and all that good stuff. Or if you're stitching on a hoop or a smaller key snap, throw that puppy in here. I just love the durability and the portability of these. Um, and you really don't need an abundance of them. But for some reason, I'm, I have four now. I don't know why, but I do. Because I like them, that's why. Um, but these are really nice and it has her information on the tag on the back so like I said of the owl print I ordered um, a second one um, because it's on clearance and the person that I'm giving it to I know will enjoy it um, so yeah it should be good on project bags for a little while last thing I have to show you is something that I found that I don't see a lot of people talking about here's what happened so I had a slight obsession with trying to find some HDF threads and I wanted HDF because you're able to stitch with one ply of it and it has the weight of two strands of floss so you use one 
strand, but it's the equivalent of using two strands of DMC or, or whatever. And I love stitching with one ply. I love how everything lays. I love how it looks. So I was stalking eBay um, to see if I could find some HDF um, in a nice, lovely, inexpensive lot like, you know, some people did. Not naming names, Trisha, Three Hour Threads. Um, she found a nice um, lot of HDF floss. I think it had like 60 spools in it or something. And, you know, I kind of got an attitude about it because it was mine. It was mine. I didn't see it. I didn't know it was there, but it was mine and she took it from me. So that's how I feel about that. But anyway, so I've been looking for something like that and I finally gave up on it. But then... I was researching and I found out that the HDF is a 12 weight thread, which I didn't know anything about the weights of threads. I, I don't know. Well, apparently that one ply thread that is the equivalent of say two DMC threads, it's 12 weight. Um, so I went on the lookout for 12 weight cotton, 12 weight silk, and the closest that I found was YLI. And that was available on, they have YLI thread on eBay all over the place. And then they also have some on one, two, three stitch, um, even Amazon, I think, but I didn't know. So I was, I was scared to buy it. Well, I went poking around, poking around, and I discovered a brand that I am familiar with, um, that sold 12 weight single ply thread, cotton thread. That said, it was for everything from quilting to cross stitch to needle punch. So I said, okay. And it was by Sulky. Sulky Threads. We all know Sulky Threads. They make the hologram or holographic um, gritting thread that we all know and love. And I was like, okay. And then I went looking for it, looking for it. And this is what I originally found. I put it down here so you guys could see it and I lost it here it is sorry sorry got the close-up of my scalp probably or you know I don't know what you saw so I apologize for whatever you saw this is what I found on 123 stitch I ordered a couple of spools of it this is sulky 12 weight thread this is there we go. You're not seeing that, are you? You're not seeing that at all, are you? Let's try this. That sunshine is unbelievable. Can you see it? Probably not. But the colors in here, it has like turquoise, it has gold, it has rust. It's um, premium sulky, 12, late, 12 weight blendable long staple cotton. So a couple of things with this that's a little bit different. Some of you might like it, some of you won't. This is a matte finish. So it doesn't have the mercerized finish like DMC does, but I'm okay with that. But this is what it looks like off the spool. So you can easily see that it's the equivalent of two, two strands of DMC. And it's for cross stitch. So I ordered a, a spool of this from 123 just to see if I like it. I think it was like three bucks. Here's the kicker, guys. This is 330 yards of thread. So 330 yards of thread. That's the equivalent of doing, um, what am I trying to say here? I don't know. I lost my thought. Um, Oh yeah, this is the equivalent of using two strands of DMC. But you have 330 yards of thread that you could use one over one, one over two, depending on your project or your thread count on your fabric. But this is also to say, I ordered two of these because, you know, buy in bulk. I don't know why I bought two of them. I have no reason to know why. I really wanted to buy one spool just to see how it was. So instead I bought two because that's how my mind works. 
You know, I bet you I could do all of death by cross stitch with these two. All of them. Which, by the way, Emily, if you're watching this, it's completely your fault if I end up restarting death by cross stitch. I absolutely love what Emily is doing with hers. It has this vintage patchwork, patchworky look to it that is just, I drool every time I see it. And now I just want to restart mine um, for a multitude of reasons. I don't like stitching each individual X one at a time um, with my variegated floss. And I'm only on like page two, the middle of page two. So we know how big that is. I, I, have, I haven't committed to it that deeply. Um, but hers, the way she's doing it with these earth tone colors, and it's just this magical patchwork project of, of, of goodness. And I, I just want to mimic it and put it on my wall. So I might start restart death by cross stitch. But anyway, that's all to say that you could probably stitch. This is what is quick map. 660 yards of floss. You probably do all of death by cross stitch with these. Can you imagine? Anyway, so that's why I had interest in it because they came in. I was intrigued by the yardage. I was intrigued by the option to use one strand. And when I received this from 123, I discovered I liked it. So I was like, okay, well, let's see if I can get a little bit more. Um, and then I, I found it. I found it on Amazon. I found a assortment of cotton petites of the same um, sulky thread in the blendables assortment. The only difference is these are in 50 yard spools, not in... 330 yard spools, but I got 30 of them. 30 of them. This is what it looks like. All different colors. I really hope you can see this guys with all this sunlight. I'm, I'm really going to be bummed if this comes out where you can't see it. But anyway, cotton Petites. It's called petites because of the size of the spool and the yardage. So these are each 50 yard spools. And this whole thing was like 40 bucks. I'll show you one up close and personal because I like you guys. So when you open it up, they're all on these little, what do you call them? What do you call these things? I don't know. I'm about to make a mess, aren't I? It's, it's about, it's, I'm a, yeah, it's about to happen. I'm going to make a mess. So, they're on these little things where you can slide them on, slide them off. You have room for more because you know how we do. I can probably put those two spools in here. So there's tabs for more. You have this whole other side. There's room to add to the collection. But this case includes 30. And all different colors. Obviously, if you want more, you can order more um, based off of the color of your choice. Um, I don't know why it sounds like my phone's ringing, but it's not. So this is Sulky 12 Weight Blendable Cotton Petites, and it gives you the number, like this is colorway 712, but this is a nice army green, sage green, blue, like a cornflower blue, then a darker blue. Let me see. Yep, yeah, it's pretty true to life, actually. So all of this, and there's the weight again. So that's the equivalent of, of stitching with two DMC. So that's a great option for variegated threads, a very affordable option where you have an abundance of variegated threads um, at your fingertips. Um, but I think they might even sell these at Joann's. I haven't 
in there to see for myself. Um, but they might have these in the Sulky collection where you can get the like holographic um, gritting thread. Um, go over there, see what they have. But this is this might be an option. I'm going to definitely give it a go. Um, so that's exciting. I just love the idea of being able to use one spool rather than having 50 million different skeins. Um, it's very cost effective um, as far as yardage. It's, it's very generous. So I'm excited about these possibilities with this thread. So I wanted to share it with you guys um, because we like to save money when we can, don't we? So anyway, I'm trying to see what I did with that original thread to see if it can fit in here. Um, but the, did you hear that? That was wind. Let's see. And it fits. That was so loud. Sorry for the clap. But it fits. I'm excited. So that can go in there with the collection. But that's everything I had. So an hour and a half later, I thought this was going to be like a 30 minute video, 45 minute video. It's been an hour and a half, but it was fun catching up with you guys. Um, I'm going to clean up my mess. I am going to maybe do a close up for the Chatelaine experience and I'm going to upload this bad boy. Um, that's all I got. So until next time everybody happy stitching and thank you for watching subscribing and giving a thumbs up i appreciate you and always enjoy spending time with you um and i'll see you next time bye bye